living things cannot live without water. What kind of properties does water have? If you put laundry in a place where the flow of air is good, the clothes will dry quickly. Let's investigate what happens to the moisture contained in the clothes. If we put the same amount of water into two vessels and cover one with a lid, The amount of water in the vessel without a lid gradually decreases. However, the amount of water in the vessel with a lid does not decrease at all. Many drops can be seen inside the lid and vessel. What happened to the vessel without the lid? If we use a special device, you can see invisible vapor rising out of the vessel. This is water vapor. It is evaporated from the water. The evaporated water spreads into the air. However, the air can only contain a certain amount of water vapor. Let's examine the amount of water vapor that can be contained in 1000 cc of air. When the temperature is high, the air already contains a lot of vapor. If the air contains water vapor, it will become humid. We use a hydrometer to understand the degree of water vapor contained in this air. Some hydrometers can record atomically. When wet and dry bulb hydrometers are used normally, two thermometers are arranged and one is wrapped in a damp cloth. From the difference of scale between these two thermometers, the humidity can be measured. Depending on the temperature, how does water change? Place a glass tube in a flask filled with water and mark it with a rubber band on the surface of the water. Place this flask in hot water and warm it up. As the water rises, the water's surface also rises. When the temperature rises like this, the water increases in volume. The volume of water is smallest when it is 4 degrees, and even if the temperature becomes higher or lower than this, the volume increases. As you warm up the water, bubbles will first appear inside the container and will eventually come up. This is the air that is melted in the water and come out. You can see steam. The evaporated steam is cooled down by the surrounding air and we can see steam. This is steam seen through a microscope. The droplets of water can be seen.
If the temperature reaches 100 degrees, large bubbles quickly rise from the bottom. It is boiling. The bubbles are not air, it is water vapor. Until now, the water vapor evaporated from the surface of the water has also been taken out of the water. The beaker's water is being pushed by the pressure of the atmosphere. However, when you start boiling, the water vapor pressure in the water can compete with the atmospheric pressure, and bubbles fly out. As before with the special mechanism, we saw the steam when we boiled the water. When boiling, no matter how much it heats up, water will only become water vapor and the temperature will not rise over 100 degrees. Let's see the state of boiling with a similar mechanism as a pressure gauge. The water in the flask is 100 degrees and it is boiling. Close the stopper a little and try not to let the steam escape so much. The boiling stops. The pressure in the flask gradually increases. The temperature also rises. Because it is a glass flask the pressure inside cannot be increased too much. When the temperature reaches above 105 degrees, the water begins to bubble again. Let's try experiment with hot water of 60 degrees this time. Although it does not boil in this way, pull out the air in the flask to reduce the pressure inside. At 60 degrees the water began boiling. If the pressure decreases in this way, the boiling temperature will also be lower, and the higher the pressure, the higher the boiling temperature will be. In the morning when the weather is fine, there are times when dew is found on the leaves of trees. Let's find out why dew attaches to things. Let's pour ice into a container with water in it and let it cool. After a while, water droplets are attached to the outside of the container. The water vapor has mixed with the air around the container. When it touched the cold container it turned into droplets. This is dew. Let's lower the temperature of the water this time. Let's cool the water of the glass from the bottom. When it is zero degrees the water begins to freeze. When water freezes, the volume increases about one-tenth. This is why the equipment cracks. Let's try another experiment. Take 12 cc of water and alcohol and mix them together. It won't pass 24 cubic centimeters. Let's find out why. Water is a collection of molecules formed by the combination of oxygen and hydrogen. Alcohol is made from a group of molecules. The size of molecules differs depending on the substance. 
It is thought that water molecules have no gaps between them, but actually they do. Large and small balls are piling up in the glass. Mix well and put it in the original cup. This time it will not pile up. The large and small balls fill the gaps between each other. This is the same for water and alcohol. This is what we see through a microscope when we look at oil particles floating on water. It's the oil particles that are moving. It's being moved by small oil molecules. As the temperature rises, the oil particles start to move very quickly. As the temperature rises, The movement of the water molecules become more intense and eventually jumps out. This is steam. High temperature steam has great power. So it used for various things. Thank you.